Hi, everybody. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to glaze uh, ceramics using the dipping method. Um, so for today, what you're going to definitely need to have is some bisque ware. So I have some bisque pieces, some slab bisque uh, cups that have been made um, that have been fired. And so when we talk about the firing process, we're talking about they've been, they were first greenware. When you made them, they were dried to bone dry state. And then they were placed in the kiln and fired, you know, around cone 04, cone 06, 1,872 degrees. Fahrenheit is usually ideal for this. Um, when we talk about the firing process, what we're talking about is where the molecules in the, chain are, in the clay are changing. So they, they, the chemical water burns out of the clay and the molecular structure changes in, in the state that it becomes a stone-like material. So that when you touch it, it kind of changes. And this state is forever changed. You can never reconstitute this, put this back in like a recycling bin of clay, and thinking that it'll break back down. This piece of clay now could probably last longer than myself, right? Um, so in that regard, um, when you have your bit square, and that's what we call it, um, you're going to set it aside in a clean space, um, which I have here in our ceramic studio. And you want to have with you a clean brush, a bucket of clean water, um, ideally a banding wheel, something to spin, like a lazy Susan, and some cold wax. Um, you can use hot wax if you'd like to. That's up to you. Um, a lot of potters do prefer it. It is... Um, somewhat dangerous, both to breathe in as well as to use um, with the possibility of being burned, so um, do that at your own risk. But um, in our studio, because of for safety measures, we do use a cold wax. It is water soluble. So to start off with, what we're going to do is, because the bisque has come out of the kiln and it is now kind of chalky, so if I kind of rub my hand on it, little bits of dust are all over this clay. And so what's really important is that we now have to wipe that dust off of the pieces because if we don't, it causes a resist between the, the glaze as it tries to adhere to the surface of the bisque ware um, and can cause a glaze defect called crawling. And crawling is when the glaze literally pulls itself away from the bisque and collects into kind of blobs on the surface of the, um, of the piece um, and it's not desirable. So the best way to do avoid that is one of two ways. One, you can get um, your bisque ware and you can dip it into a water. And when you do that, it's going to be completely saturated. You kind of scrub down the piece a little bit if you'd like to. But you have to give it 24 hours in an open air space for all that water to evaporate. Because you need the bisque ware because the bisque ware has now become this very like, sponge-like material to suck up all the water in the dipped glaze to adhere the glaze to the surface of the piece. So, for instance, I'm not going to do that today, but I'm going to use a damp sponge, which I've saturated, and then I'm wringing it out, and wiping along the surfaces of my entire piece. All right, so you can see that I'm doing that here, as well as on the bottom and the inside. And you want to do this for every single piece. And because I'm only really dealing with the surface, I'm not like overly absorbing too much water or saturating too much water into the piece. I'm really just getting that residual dust off. So once you've done that, you would probably want to do that with all of your pieces at the same time. And then you would set it aside, um, maybe give it five minutes, and then continue to the next step. So the next step, what you're going to do is with that banding wheel, Make sure it's a nice clean surface because a lot of them have like residual wax or glaze on them from maybe other users or yourself. So you can see I'm kind of cleaning that surface off. You're going to turn this piece upside down. And any banding wheel is going to have circles already kind of placed on it. You want to center that as best as you can. So when it spins, it is placed in the middle. Then you're going to take your cold wax and you're going to adhere I'm going to pull you guys in a little bit further so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. That you are actually going to um, add the wax 
in a circular motion around the piece. So you can see that I'm starting to do that from the top. And you don't want this to be really thick and runny by any means. And you want it to go only about a quarter to a sixteenth, sixteenth of an inch um, along the edge. So you can see that I've added that wax along the edge of the piece as well as the top. So the wax, when it's cold, is going to be the consistency of like a heavy cream. When it dries, it's going to dry to a crusty kind of honeycomb wax, like beeswax color. Because it's water soluble, you have to wait until it's completely dried before you would put it into a, um, into a glaze to dip it. So hold tight and um, I'll be back to show you the second half of the demo when the wax dries. Okay everyone, um, now our piece has dried and it is ready to be dipped into glaze. So there's two different ways that I plan to approach this. I am going to put in a clear um, semi-matte glaze to the inside of this piece and then the exterior, because I don't want to lose my design, I am going to add a clear. So it is going to be a two-part. Um, with this glazing demonstration, you always want to put glaze on the inside first and then the exterior and it's always important not to forget about your rim. So to start off with, um, I have a bucket here of clean water. I also have a mixing drill, as you can see here, which is really important for this process. And then I have my bucket of, of glaze. So the glaze, as you can see, is this gray color. So glaze, unlike paint, is not going to be the color that it will be when it comes out of the firing process, because the heavy metals and the oxides react to the atmosphere inside the kiln and give you the finished result, unlike what you see with oil paint or acrylic. So to start off with, this is settled. This glaze is really thick and heavy at the bottom with heavy, heavy um, component like particles, and the water is mainly at the top. So it's really important that I drill this up, and in doing so, we don't want to bang the drill ar along the edges of the bucket, we really want to keep it kind of towards the center and create a true spiraling um, of the water to get everything really mixed, uh, mixed up. So here we go. Okay. Now my glaze is this really nice creamy consistency. I will, and then I'm going to put this into my water bucket to get any of that residual kind of glaze off of my drill and let that rest there. So moving forward, we now have our bucket of mixed glaze. You want any kind of pouring container, this is what I'm using for today, you are going to fill up your bucket um, or your pitcher and then you're going to fill up your piece. And as you can see, I'm not going all the way to the top. And I want to do a three-second count. And after my three-second count, because it's absorbing the glaze, I'm going to bend down and in a circular rotation, re relieve all of that glaze. So I made that look really easy. So by doing so, by pouring it just in one spot, you're not going to get all of the inside. It's important that you continue it in a circular rotation that you get all of the inside as well as the rim. So now I need to let that dry. And when that dries, it dries actually quite fast um, because it's absorbing, all the water is absorbing into the bisque of the clay. So while I'm letting that sit and rest, and as you can see also that my wax has dried to be that honey beeswax color. So as I let that sit, I'm going to put my clear base aside. I mean, not my clear, excuse me, my white base. Now I've got a larger bucket, and this is my clear glaze. And this is, these glazes are all formulated with the correct specific gravity, meaning that the wet water base 
as well as our dry materials are mixed to a specific, specific gravity so that it is the right consistency to absorb into the bisque in that three second time frame to get about a dime thickness of application. Glaze is very different than paint. It's all about your application and the consistency of that application, not about how it just looks. So here, this glaze is much, it's a much um, larger quantity, so I need to mix that up. So as that is finished, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the inside of my cup, as I touch it, it's completely dry. It's this chalky, kind of gray, dime thickness material. So now I have to be able to cover the piece with glaze on the exterior. I have my wax on the bottom, which is a resist, because we can't have glaze on the bottom of pots at all, because the glaze turns to glass. And that glass, as it melts, will adhere to the bottom as well as to the kiln shelf. So that has to be completely clear and void of any glaze. But the size of the pieces is really important. So taking my hand like a prong, so I'm going to put my hand once inside the cup, I'm going to kind of press it out. I am going to kind of take this up to about a half or a quarter of an inch from the top. I'm not going to try to go all the way to the top. It's a beginner's mistake to try to go all the way top because you will have glaze go into the inside. And what we want is a clear glaze exterior and a white interior glaze. So I've got my prong. I'm holding it in place, right? So I'm going to put it down for my three-second count. And then I bring it back out. And I'm going to kind of just shake it off. And as I shake it off, you can see that it has resisted. So I've got some droplets of glaze on the bottom, and that's really common that you would get droplets. Where the wax is, has resisted, you would just, while you're still holding it, take your wet sponge and wipe off that excess. Okay. All in one easy, consistent sweep, and then put your piece up, and voila, it is now glazed and ready to be fired. Once they're all finished and ready to go, you would then take this into the kiln and put them on the kiln shelf to be fired or um, load them into the kiln yourself.